Go ahead and get started. Uh, we're going to talk about completing the square today, uh, dealing with equations of circles. So one of the objectives we'll talk about is uh, by the end of the day, you'll be able to complete the square to write the equation of a circle in standard form. Now, we've talked about the standard form of equation of a circle. Uh, so what we're going to do to start off is a little first five, uh, basically reviewing a standard form equation of a circle. So if you are in the this row, this row, and Modesto's row, going back, you will work problem one. If you are in the rows that I didn't identify, you will work problem two. And we are going to talk about those particular problems. So I'm going to give you a couple minutes to work on them. And you can go ahead and start. And then we're going to assess each other's work. Give you about another minute or so, just kind of a minute or two. And we're going we're gonna to switch and talk, talk about each one. All right. Once you've both finished them, what I want you to do is I want you to swap papers and assess your partner's work. See if you agree with what your partner did on one or vice versa if what you agree with what your partner did on two. So if you have it, then don't switch it yet. But if you have it, go ahead and switch it. Okay, that's what about this one? Well, that one's wrong. I don't understand what number five is. All right. How many of you felt you know really good about one? One was probably pretty easy. Everybody should know one, right? So what did you get for one, Modesto? Uh, does everybody agree with B for one? <laughs> a lot of confidence. I like, I like where your head's at. But, but what Vanessa is doing is he's just seeing if you guys are really paying attention to what he's having to say. Would anybody, would anybody disagree oh, no, with no, one? No, 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 no. What would you suggest, John? D. All right, D. Very similar to B, but the only difference is he didn't square his radius. Not a big deal, but we appreciate that, Vanessa. Now, how many of you felt difficulty with two? Hey, does anybody have any idea of how to work two? No. Now, two's a little bit more in depth. That's fine. What do you got, Coleman? Oh, I was going to say you could plug in uh, U, R, and S into the... Okay. So, so, here's the deal. If you know that these points are on the circle, the equation grabs the circle, provides, you know, the equation provides what the circle would look like. So, all you have to do is really what? Plug them in. So, when you plug them in, what did you find? But okay. For, for B, the first one works. Okay, so so here's here's what I'll even tell you, and, and we'll look about it, look at it a little bit more in depth. But if you know that Q doesn't work for this one, can it be can it be A? No, because because all three of those points have to be on the circle. So you check point Q and found it worked for B. So if you check if you check point R for B, nine minus five, which is four, four squared is sixteen plus negative 2 squared, which is 4, gives you 20. If I check 9 and 2, the only difference between 9 and 2 and 9 and negative 2 is I'm squaring 2 versus negative 2, which is what? The same. the same thing. So we know that it has to be B. Now, another thing to take into consideration, what do you know about point Q and point R? They're directly across from each other. They have the same Y value. So when they're directly across from each other, that would indicate what? Diameter. So the diameter from 1 to 9 would be what? The distance from 1 to 9. 8. 8. Hey, 1 to 9. 1 plus 9 is 10, but the distance from 1 to 9 is 8. All right. So half that distance would be 4, so that would indicate where our center is. So I could add 4 to this point to the x value, or I could subtract 4 to well, when you add 4 or subtract 4 from point Q and point R, the x value, you would get 5. Well, x minus 5, x minus 5, those all give you an x value of 5 for your center. So that's, that's one thing that you can do. But understand, this is no different from you evaluating an equation. Just plug it in and work backwards if necessary. If it's something that you don't recognize offhand. Uh, same thing for 3. Uh, you know, obviously, I wanted you guys to look at each other's work and assess each other's work. Hopefully... Hopefully your partner corrected you, Modesto, but hey, if not, we got it all corrected. 
So here's what we'll do. If you'll, t if you'll put that aside for right now, go ahead and get out your book. And I want you to open it to section 27.2. We're going to talk about lesson 27.2, which in the text deals with completing the square, dealing with finding the standard form equation of a circle. Now, everything we've done up to this point has mirrored what the standard form equation of a circle is. So obviously, you have x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. All right? So, Ishmael, what is hk? x and y. Well, hk is obviously dealing with x and y, but what do we know that is in the circle? A very important piece of that circle. Tell them about there, Ethel. The center of the circle? There you go, center of the circle. All right, we know that obviously R is our radius. All right, you know, if we know the center of the circle and we want to graph the circle, we can actually go to the center, go up that radius, go to the right that radius, left that radius, and down that radius, right? Not a big deal. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to read this first paragraph, all right? And I want you to underline what you deem is most important about that first paragraph. And then I want you to use that information to help you answer number one. So, so you can work individually initially, if you have a question, ask your partner. If you have a secondary question, obviously you want to ask me. So everybody look, underline the most critical pieces of information in that paragraph, and attempt to answer number one to the best of your ability. Everything written like this. So I'm going to write both equations down, and we're just going to talk about what's blatantly different between each. All right, Modesto, round two for you. Let's look at those two equations. Obviously, we're used to the standard form equation of a circle, okay? So what's different between that and what's listed in number one? Just think of obvious things that, that, that don't look different, or that look different, sorry. One of the equations is a what? Just anything. Well, what do you see here? Uh, this is the same thing that's in your book. What do you see that's from here to here? Here to here. What is different? Well, what do you notice? Okay, start with the x. Good, that's a good starting point. The x comes for y anyways. That's a great starting point. So what do you notice the difference between this and this? Two of them, okay, there's, there's a square. But, but I'll even argue that there's a square here. But what do you notice here? There's parentheses. So the question becomes, why is there not parentheses here? And that's what we're trying to figure out. That's where completing the square comes into play. When you guys were in algebra last year, you talked about factoring. So for example, we'll go with Ishmael. When you factor that, Ishmael, that basic trinomial, all right, two factors of four that add up to what? Four. What are those two factors of four that would add up to four? <laughs> two and two. Great. So this is what you're doing. You're wanting to break this down where you have some form that mirrors that standard form equation of the circle. All right, we would call that a perfect square. All right, that's why we're calling it completing the square. Because if we're completing the square, we're actually taking this and making it to where it looks something like this, whether it's x minus 2 squared, x minus 3 squared, x plus 3 squared, whatever it may be. All right, so here's what I want you to do. They have here in the text, it says, in algebra you learn how to complete the square to rewrite quadratic polynomials. Obviously, uh, completing the square is a little fuzzy for some of us, so that's fine, and I anticipate that. So we're going to use algebra tiles to help, help do that. So here's what I want you to do. Go ahead and get out your algebra tiles. All right, you're going to get out the, uh, you have uh, in the long rectangular piece, you have one side that's green, one side that is obviously in this particular case red, which would indicate negative, and then we have yellow and red. Now. They're just to indicate positive and negative. So let me explain to you what this means. All right. Here's what I want you to look at. So you see how this piece mirrors our large square? 
That's our x squared, right? Pretty easy. You see how this mirrors our rectangle? We're going to call that our x. You see how it has bx? So that would be the number of x terms that we have. And then obviously plus bx plus c. So b was always the number in front of x. That was that coefficient. So in this case, what is b? In the, in the question, x squared plus 6x, b has to be 6. Okay, so here's what's happening. When you look at that, and we know it's 6, it's telling us to divide it by 2. What's half of 6? 3. Three. So here's how this is going to work. When you look at these algebra tiles, the x squared is positive. <clears throat> so I'm going to put my x squared in the top left corner, bottom left corner, bottom right, or top right. Matters none to me. Now, there is six total x terms, correct? That's what B stands for. Is six positive or is six negative? Positive. positive. So that means we're going to be on the green side. We're going to be on the positive side. So when we look at this, we are going to piece it together so that we can make a square. So look, one and one, two and two, three and three. Now, if this shape were to be a square, what are we missing? If you square something, is it going to be positive or negative? Positive. positive. So no matter what we do, those tiles in that bottom right all have to be positive. So the yellow side has to be pointing up. So look, fill in those tiles. All you have to do is fill in a square. Make a square. So this is our x squared tile, which we identified. Our x tile, we started with six x's. We still have six x's, right? Now, in this particular case, we filled in this di those numbers. Those are single values. Those are constants. How many of them are there? Nine. Nine. So when we write this new part, it's going to look like this. x squared plus 6x plus 9. When you factor that, what do you get? Two factors of 9 that add up to 6. Three. So it's x plus 3 times x plus 3, which is x plus 3 squared. All right, this enables you to complete the square. Now here's what you have to do. Since I'm adding 9 to one side, what do I have to do to the other? <coughs> For example, if I have Ethel equals Irene, there are two, two buddies in this class, and I go, okay, um, Ethel, we're going to add one to that side of the equation. What do I have to do to the other to ensure that it's the same? Add one. Same concept here. Okay? So, would everybody agree that this is already set up for you as y minus 2 squared? Not a big deal, right? So, as I evaluate that, so as I look left, I looked right. So when I add 9 to both sides, I have to add 9 over here. So now what I have is x plus 3 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 25. What's the center of the circle? Landry, what's the center of the circle? Uh, 3 or negative 3 positive 2. So the center of that circle is negative 3, 2. <laughs> Modesto. <laughs> Little redemption. What's the radius? 5. Wonderful. You take the square root of, of the radius squared and you get your radius. So this is an easy way to help you determine how to complete the square. It gives you an idea to where you can actually use your hands and actually construct it. So here's what I want you to take a second doing with your partner. I want you to look at those algebra tiles. Now the question is, what if you didn't know how to factor? If this is x squared, what do I have to multiply to get x squared? X and x. So this side is x. That side is x. If this whole piece is x, then the length is x. What's the width? 1. So what's the width of those three? 3. three. So that's x 
plus 3, x plus 3. So that's where you get the x plus 3 squared from. It factors it for you. So until you get the hang of the process of completing the square. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to take a second and practice with the algebra tiles, and I want you to look at, you see on the bottom of 397, I want you to look at A, and I want you to look at B. And I want you to, I want you to complete the square and write the equations of the circles. But use your algebra tiles to do A and B on 397. 397A and B. Okay, so Gavin, we got to work. X squared minus two X plus one squared X so, No, Well, no, because that's already there. So what you're going to do is you're only dealing with that one. So as you complete the square, whatever you do here, you'll add it to both sides because that's already done for you. You're only going to deal with the ones that aren't fat. Right. Yeah. I'm going to come to a stopping point on this. Now, okay, hopefully, hopefully you understand a couple things. What's the process that you're going through to do this? So when you're dividing by two, what are you immediately doing after? You're multiplying or you're squaring. So all you're really doing is you're taking that middle term, Dividing it by 2 and squaring it, and that creates your perfect square. So if you notice, every time that you did this, the number of uh, individual pieces or constant terms that you had, if you could, you, it's a perfect square. You had like 1, you had 4, you had 9. You never had something that was like 7. Or you never had something that we did as of this point that was not a perfect square. So really what you have to understand is you're dividing, you're squaring, and you're adding. What you do to one side, you have to do to both. Now, same thing here. Take that middle term, divide it by 2. What, what do you get? 4 over 2 is what? 2, square it. So you have to add it to both sides. Well, right off the bat, what do you know? Radius is what? Four. If the test is multiple choice, so like the first couple of questions I gave you earlier, you could have eliminated two answers. So it's key, even if you forget things that happen, make sure that you eliminate those answers in a test situation. So here, this factors down to x plus 2 squared plus y minus 4 <coughs> All right, obviously our center is negative 2, 4. Radius is 4. Graphing that circle would be over the edge. So here's what we're going to do. You can choose to use the algebra tiles or you can choose to work this algebraically. Just remember, all we're doing is we're taking B, 
dividing it by 2, and then we're squaring it in order to complete that square. So if you'll take a second, I want you to open up. I gave everybody has a little baggie. It has 18 flashcards. So I want you to open up that baggie, and I'm going to go over one of them with you. Get the center and the radius identified. All right? You're going to have six cards all right, that are all written in red. This has a standard form equation of the circle. You're going to have six cards that deal with you completing the square. All right, so you're going to complete the square, find the equation that matches, and then once you know the equation that matches, you should be able to identify the center, and you should be able to identify what? The radius. There is one thing that we need to address. All right? What do you notice about every one of these problems? So if, if, I, if I give you a problem like this, the number is always what? On its own side. The whole number is always on its own side. Secondly, the x squared trio should have obviously one in red, one in green, one in blue. You can write on them. They're yours to write on. Welcome to my empty screen. Yeah, there. Mm -hmm. You have 12 likes for that, divided in 6. You can divide that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's going to be subtraction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. We're going to take the paper Okay. Well, well, here's what you have to understand first. If you divide that by 2 and square it, you get 4. Mm -hmm. so, but the 4x still stays the same, so it should be x squared plus 4x plus 4. Okay. Okay. And then you have to add 4 to the other side. Okay, thank you. Well, at that point, what you want to do is you want to make it in your factor form. So you want to make it in your two perfect squares. So like the y squared minus 8 is going to be like y minus 4 squared. So that's what you want to do. But you don't have to keep it as the negative y. It's just going to be those two factors. Now, the only difference is you're not going to have an x here. So when you take that, so like when you move the 3x to the other side, Instead of it being 3x, it's just going to be 3. So x plus 3 squared, and then y plus 5 squared. Now, the only difference is that 2 is positive, but what you've got to do is you've got to add these numbers squared. So that means 3 squared is 9, 5 squared is 25. What you add to one side, in order to factor it, you have to add to the other. An error. There, there should have been oh, one. Wrong. <laughs> now, there should have been one. What was the error it occur with? With the square root of what? 22, right? Now, what you found out is I had 22 on the right side when in actuality it should have been 36. It was probably, you might not have even known it because it matched with the center of the circle. And so when you matched them up, that's what you would have identified. So let me look at yours. Yeah, but you would have said 4 and then 25. So what I did is I added, that makes sense. But if you had it, match that. You're good. Alright, what I want you to do. If you'll, if you'll clear your desk for a minute, put a sheet of paper in your cell phone. We're going to play a Kahoot game just to practice and make sure we're good. Uh, some questions will deal with things that we did in the previous day. Uh, and then some of those questions will actually uh, have maybe, uh, I guess, some definitions, uh, some completing the square.
No. So it says a blank is the locus of points in a plane that are fixed distance from a center point. Hopefully we know this one. So what's the equation of the circle? Alright, center is showing 4, 3 if you can't see it. Obviously you have to figure out what the other piece is. Alright. Now, alright, everybody let's talk about this. Everybody listen. What we forgot here is these two answers mimic each other. If it's 4, 3, when we put it into the equation, they both have to be negative. So x minus 4 squared, y minus 3 squared. The difference is actually determining what that radius would be. It's radius squared. So that's why it would be 25 over 5. So see, we got a new leader. All right. So this is, you know the center. All right, first and foremost, now you have a point that's on the circle. So in order to know and find out what the radius is, what do you have to do? Oh, I got it wrong. I don't know. <laughs> Actually, you could probably pretty much. You can I think I'm wrong. Oh, no. Alright. Now, look. Here's what I want you to understand. Alright, obviously we're 50 50. It's in a time, it's in a time to constraint in this particular case. So look, the radius has to be what? The distance. So the distance from the center, which is 4, negative 1, and 1, negative 5. Now, here's what I'm gonna go ahead and tell you. Graph it. Okay? Now you can graph it, so if you have 4, negative 1. And you actually graph that, so you had 4, negative 1, and you had uh, 1, negative 5. Alright, we have to determine this distance, so make a right triangle. The, the uh, width or the base on the bottom is 3, height is 4, 5. So you can figure out it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Obviously, you can also look at that distance. The square root of 5 is what? 20. Square root of 5 is what? If you took the square root of 5, what's the square root of 4? Oh. 2. Dose. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 5 is somewhere between 2 and 3. Very close to 2. This distance is over 2. So the only one it could have been is 25. All right. I'm going to say it's first. That's what I'm saying. What'd you go with? It looks right. Oh, you're right. We didn't even answer it. Alright, hey, everybody listen. Like I said, it was Hey, how many have we how many have we dealt with that had an odd number? Well when you divide that odd number, seven divided by two is seven halves or three point five, depending on if you're a person that deals with fractions or deals with decimals. Well, in this case it's in decimal form. So I know if it's three point five, when I square three point five, it's still gonna be a decimal. Well, I know that that's 3.5, but when I square it, the only other one it could be is 12.25. What I have passed out is just an exit ticket. I know that we've only got three to four minutes left. What I want you to do is I want you to look at one and two, focus on one and two, answer what you can. If there's something that you don't understand, I need you to start. That'll be something that I can go back over tomorrow. The first question deals with the check all that apply that will mimic Questions that you'll probably see on the EOC now that the test is going to be structured. Yeah, let me get you one. I'm sorry. All right, so I'm going to give you a couple minutes. We'll go over it. Uh, first thing tomorrow, as you hand it in to me, as you leave, I will look at this guy's. Uh, <laughs> Expect a little bit more out of Ishmael.